Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I am going to be talking about uploading music packs to the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Um, I know this can be a confusing process for some people who may be their first time uploading a music pack to the Unreal Engine. So I want to break it down step by step, hopefully in a super easy way um, with the process that I've done to submit eight different music packs. Um, they've all gone really smoothly, so I hope to share some of that with you and give you a, uh, a super simple way to get your music online as well. So the very first thing you need to do is download the Unreal Engine. We actually have to prepare the files into a game project that a game developer is going to use. So we need to download the Unreal Engine. You can do that from unrealengine.com and you can scroll through, click on the download button and you'll be able to download the uh, the Epic Games Launcher, if you don't have it already, uh, you do need that. And then from there, you will be able to install your version of uh, the Unreal Engine that you want to work with. So after you've downloaded the launcher, you want to go into the Unreal Engine menu. From here, click on Library, and you will see all of the engine versions that you can install simply by clicking on the plus icon and then selecting from the drop-down menu which version you want to install. I recommend installing 4.0.2. The reason for this is because it's going to be one of the oldest versions that you can download, that you can install and create your music assets with, um, because a future version, a more recent version of the engine, uh, is not going to be backwards compatible. So this way your music pack will be accessible to as many developers as possible, because whoever is using 4.0.2 and higher will be able to use your asset. Whereas if you create it with the 5.2 engine, which is the most current one, people who have, are using Unreal Engine 4 are not going to be able to use your product. So I highly recommend using 4.0.2. Uh, simply select that from your drop-down menu, click install, and then it uh, may take a bit of time to get that installed into your system. Once you have done that, now we're going to launch the Unreal Engine. And you're going to have to create a project for your music pack. Um, there are some rules in terms of the naming conventions for your project file. Um, it does have to be one word, <laughs> uh, no spaces. You can use underscores if you want. Um, but you also cannot start with a number, which is a bit strange to me. Uh, so you want to go to new project create a clean empty project with no code and then from down here you can select your project name and the destination where it's going to be created so for my example today i'm going to be recreating my orchestral fantasy music pack so because i already have one called orchestral fantasy i will just rename it uh, orchestral fantasy 2. So then from here, we are going to create our project. Uh, if this is the first time that you're launching Unreal Engine, it may take a little bit longer uh, to get it up and running than if it's you know the second or third time you've, you've run it. So uh, don't be alarmed by any slow processing when it's first uh, loading up. All right, so here we are in the Unreal Engine. Um, because we are creating a music pack, we're not going to need really any of this, uh, any of these screens that are open right now. The only one that we are concerned with is the content browser. So what I like to do is just to drag this up to the top so it makes the uh, content browser full screen. So from here, what we need to do is we have to set up a very specific hierarchy of folders. So we have our game folder, but let's right click click plus new folder. So this has to be the name of your music pack. So for my case, I'm naming this one Orchestral Fantasy 2. And then from here, I have to create two more folders. I have to create one called Waves, and I have to create another one called Cues. So every Unreal Engine music pack it needs to have these two folders, one to host the actual wave files that you are that you have created from your DAW of choice and the cues, which is essentially a way for Unreal Engine to know what files to play. So once we've selected our Waves folder, 
we can very easily drag and drop all the files that we want to put into the music pack. So let me just drag and drop these over. And then the Unreal Engine is going to compress all of those even further. Um, you have to load it in as a WAV file, and it has to be 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit file. Um, those are just the standard requirements for Unreal Engine, and that's pretty standard across the other uh, marketplaces as well. Unity also requires 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit uh, files. So um, if you're going to be releasing on both of those marketplaces, then your files are going to be already set for you. And here are all of my files now loaded into Unreal Engine. I like to change it, the, the view type to columns just so I can see a bit more information kind of at a glance. Um, and it's going to be really easy to work with from here. So the first thing that I want to do is select all my files, right click, and go to the details. From here, I'm going to set to uh, looping. So this means that all the files are going to be uh, treated as a loopable file um, because my files are all loopable sounds. They, they will play the whole way through and restart at the very beginning. Um, even if your tracks aren't meant to be seamless loops, I would still recommend checking this off because then um, even if your music fades out nicely, it will replay again. So if it's going to be used as a uh, menu track, you don't want it to just play once and then never play again. You want it to be infinitely looping no matter what. So this is the first step. And it's a super easy step to do because we can do it in bulk just by doing the control A and then we loop them. The next step is to right click and create Q. What this does is it creates that Q file that we need for the engine to properly play the wave. So we see that all of our sound cues have been created and highlighted for us. So now, without clicking anything else, I can simply drag and drop these into my cues folder. It gives me the option to copy here or move here. I want to move them so that I'm left with just my wave files in my waves folder. So now in cues, we can see my files are all named just as they need to be. The exact same naming convention from the waves folder, except we have Q at the end. Now this, this is the tedious step. Everything else has been in bulk so far. Now we have to select all of our files, right click, edit, and then this is going to open up our little our, our visual representation of what the file is going to be doing. Um, so if I click on my first tab up here, we can see we have our wave player, which is the wave file itself, and we have an output, and they are connected via a node. So it's already done that for us. Super helpful. The thing that we have to do now is simply click on this looping checkbox. After we've clicked on the wave player, click looping and close the tab. So now we're on to the second track. Click on the wave player, looping and close the tab. This is the most tedious part of this process, but given that everything else was able to be done in bulk, this isn't so bad. So I'm just going to do this very quickly and probably just speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do this in real time. All right, so now that all of my files have been uh, checked off with that looping box, I'm going to click uh, do control S just to save everything because I'd hate to lose any of this work that we've done so far. And now we can go back to our main window. From here, we need to package the project for Windows. So this will compile everything that we need it to be, um, everything all perfectly uh, formatted. Take note of where it's going to save this. It should be in your kind of default uh, Unreal Projects folder. So let's see my Orchestral Fantasy 2. So let's save that. And then in the bottom right corner, unfortunately you can't see it 
uh, right now because of my uh, computer monitor, but it'll say packaging project for Windows. There'll be a dot, 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 little animation. As soon as that's done, it will say packaging complete, and there'll be a little green check mark. And that way you know that everything is taken care of. It's all finished. So I'm a uh, compulsive saver. So I will control S just one more time just to save it. And uh, so that is everything in terms of creating the project, getting all the files baked in. Now what we have to do is do a bit of cleanup on the folders and then we create a zip folder. All right, so now that we've located our folder where we've created that uh, uh, Unreal Engine project, what we need to do is we need to clean out a few folders that are gonna be empty and not necessary for us. So if we click in this config folder, we need to keep, do not delete that. That one is important. The content is the, all those files that we created, that we, uh, the sound cues and the waves. What we need to do is just confirm that only the files that we want exist. So here we can see our 20 cues and they're all named the, the U asset files. So that's perfect. Uh, but sometimes the waves folder still has some residual uh, files from when we tried to do that, that copy over. So um, what we need to do in here is sort by the size. And then our wave files are going to be, you know, huge, you know, uh, 10 to 20 megabytes or more, depending on how long the file is. But all the queues are going to be one kilobyte. So those ones we don't need in the waves folder. So we can just delete those. And if we go back to our uh, main folder, the saved and Windows editor are not going to be necessary. So we can simply delete them. Oh, but I have to close the uh, the main project first. So let me close that and then try again. There we go. So these are the only three things that we need in our main folder, the config, the content, and the actual uh, Unreal Engine project itself. So from here, uh, whatever zip or compression program you have, uh, you can create a zip file from this now. You can use either the, the built-in uh, Windows Explorer uh, compression method, um, or you can use 7-zip or whatever other programs that you may have. Um, whatever it is, simply zip the folder so it becomes a single file that can then be saved to Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, essentially, you need to have a shareable link. Um, that is the only way that we can actually submit the files to Unreal Engine Marketplace is through a shareable link. Now that we package the asset, we have it zipped into a neat uh, zip file. We can now create our product in our Unreal Engine Marketplace seller profile. So if you haven't created a seller profile yet on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, you'll need to do that uh, when you go to the publish.unrealengine.com uh, URL. You'll be able to create your seller profile, uh, make sure you get all of your information in there. But then once you've taken care of that, you'll be able to add a product. So from here, you will be able to um, upload all of your images. They are very precise about dimensions. So they have to be in 1920 by 1080 um, for your gallery images, like any screenshots that you might wanna share of artwork or images of the files in Explorer or in the Unreal Engine uh, project itself. The thumbnail has to be 284 by 284 and the featured image has to be 894 by 488. So then we have the product information. Um, use your product title, whatever the asset is. You can set your price uh, based on the options that they provide. You don't get to select your own customized price. It has to be one of them to drop down menu. Uh, the category, you're gonna select music, tags. Um, I have no AI as a default because I do not want my products used with AI learning software. Um, so that's just an important thing for me. If you do not mind your, your assets being used for AI generative purposes, then you can not include that, but that's just a, uh, an option that Unreal uh, has for you. You can allow that to be a default tag. You'll put in your description, your long description, any technical information. Um, and you can look at any of my existing assets to see what I have in there as an example. 
but then here is where we are going to be adding our product files. So you'll need to create a new version. So let's create a new version, enter your project version name. Uh, I typically like to call this the asset product with the version number. So orchestral fantasy 1.0 and with any future versions, you can do 1.1 or 1.0.1 uh, .1 or, or version 2.0 if you've done a major update to it. Uh, but then here we have the project file link. So enter a link at which you're hosting one downloadable zipped up project or plugin folder. So for us, we had, uh, I have it sit backed up to Google Drive. Make sure you have it shareable. That is a public link. Otherwise you will get a, um, an email back saying, you know, we could not process it because we couldn't download your files. So make sure you are uh, checking that to make sure that anyone can download it. I like to test that by pasting the URL into an incognito browser so that I know for a fact I'm not signed into my own account, but you can then test to see if you can download it from there. The supported engine versions, because we created ours in 4.0.2, we can check off every single one of these all 31 versions you can check off. I'm not going to do it now. I don't need to, but you can check all of them off uh, uh, since we created it um, from the 4.0.2 and supported platforms because it's music. It's not going to be unsupported <laughs> on any of these. So you can check all of these off as well. And uh, the distribution method, you want to leave it as a, an asset pack. So once you've gotten all of that information in there, you can preview it so you can save changes and come back later or you can submit it for approval. I hope that was a, an easy walkthrough of the Unreal Engine uh, marketplace submission process. It really isn't that bad. Again, the most tedious part is just ensuring that each file has that looping checkbox um, for the queues. Uh, but that's even if that's not so bad, it's maybe five seconds per track. So it might take you a few minutes, might take you 10 minutes, depending on how large uh, your, your project is. But the nice thing is that once you have uh, created your one asset, if you have done that for, you know, five or six different projects and you have all these different asset packs, you can bundle them all together incredibly easy. It really is as easy as taking our uh, zipped folder in here from our content, simply copy and paste that into your new project and you can have them all bundled together. Your queues are already set up. It's incredibly easy to bundle them together for distribution in a larger pack at a discounted price, and everyone loves a discount. So I highly recommend creating small packs and then bundling them all together. And because you've done all the grunt work on the smaller packs, creating the bundle is incredibly easy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I will be doing a video on publishing to the Unity Asset Store as well, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but I wanted to get this one out first because I know that this can be a daunting task for many people. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, take care. Have a good one.